Manifest with Tori D. Simone. I'm your host, Tori D. Simone, a 26 year old coming at you on this lovely Monday morning. Oh my God, you guys, I have just been so obsessed with turning 26. As you guys know, I have talked about it extensively in my last two podcast episodes, and I just can't shut up about it. The concept of aging is so crazy, and I never thought I'd be the person to sit here and talk about getting older, and I'm sure one day I'm going to look back on this episode when I'm older than 26 and be like, oh my God, Tori, you had nothing to even talk about. Just wait till you turn 29, 30, 31, da 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 whatever. But today, I'm still wrapped up around the whole aging conversation, and we're going to talk about that today a bit more about self-image, and I think I cracked the code of why 26 is so crazy to me and how I've actually like come to peace with getting a little bit older since then. Um, it's just been a wild ride, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Welcome back. Today's episode is more off the cuff, which you guys request more of these actually more off the cuff where it's less scripted. And I just talked to you guys like we're on FaceTime, like we're friends because number one, we are friends. I really do feel like, you know, me, I know you and that's just how that works. Um, and then on the flip side of it, I also just want the show, like, I feel like the show has taken such a different direction lately in the past year and a half, two years where it turned very wellness, wellnessy tippy, which is not a bad thing. Like I think there's definitely a time and a place for those episodes, but I'm not always inspired. I'm not always ready to be giving tips. I don't always have like the answers. Do you know what I mean? So I don't always want this show to be tips about how to feel your best, look your best, do your best, perform at your best. Because the reality is I'm not always feeling, looking, being, performing my best. So I always want this to remain authentic. And especially there are a lot of moments when I might just be like down or just not feeling the best or I'm just like laying low, chilling. And I'll be on YouTube and like I'll be scrolling through a podcast or something to watch And I'll see like a motivational self-help podcast. I'm like, get this so far away from me. So like, I completely understand that. And I don't always want this show just to be super wellnessy, even though that is something that I'm passionate about. I also just want it to be, you know, about me and growing up and kind of just like a personal diary, but one that we can all benefit from. And just really like the grassroots of this show. Like I remember my first episode ever was just coming on here, talking about how confused I was with the diet industry and everything of that nature and like what are we supposed to be doing and all that stuff. It's still one of my most popular episodes because I just think a lot of people resonated with it and it was also just raw and vulnerable and real. So I kind of wanted to bring that back a little bit and bring that narrative of just off the cuff talking to you guys back and you guys seem to really like it. Last week, um, I really just talked a lot about aging, of course, but also just about like uh, reality TV shows and Summer House and just like stuff like that. Who I really feel like I am. It's a little bit of this. It's a little bit of that. It's a little bit of everything. And it's so funny because I was voice messaging my friend Chelsea today. And I looked down at my phone and it was a 15 minute voice message, which for her and I is like light work. But I was like, tell me you're a podcaster without telling me you're a podcaster. Like, I can just talk to myself for 15 minutes. And at least for the podcast, people listen other than just Chelsea on the other end of it. But anyway, today I'm going to be talking about self-image and showing up as who you want to be in your life. And I think there's a big conversation that's been going on and I've seen it on TikTok, which side note, I deleted my TikTok again, just the app, because I was just spending so much time on TikTok, like so much time on TikTok to the point where I think it was on Sunday it was so nice. I was at the beach. It was so, so nice out. And I was like, I want to do a full day 
and I want to do all these things. And then I laid down in my bed for 10 minutes and I was like, I'll just go on TikTok for 10 minutes. Three hours later, three hours later. And when I tell you it felt like five minutes, that's the problem with TikTok. And that's also the problem with so much. Like my attention span is shit. It's shot. My, like, I think that's why I'm not reading as much. I guess that's really the only thing that's really negatively impacting is that I'm not reading as much. And it's because TikTok is just so brain rotting and so mindless that I just do it when I just want to release. But my attention span is horrible because of it. And I never leave the app feeling better than when I first went on. So it's just a mess overall. But anyway, to kind of conclude what I was saying, I saw this on TikTok a few weeks ago where someone was, I think it was a guy, but I've also seen girls do this too. And it was a guy and he was like, I'm 35 and this is not the same 35 that my parents were when they were 35. And that's been something that's been so top of mind. And I recently went through my demographics of who listens to my podcast and I don't know why I thought in my head like it was very 18 to 24. No, the majority, like over 50% of my listeners are 25 to 31, which is awesome because we are all in the same phase of life, which is cool because I feel like we've all, you guys grew up with me, right? And we're all growing up together. So when I talk about things like 25, 26, 27, in terms of those years of life, I don't want to bore the people that can't relate, but the majority of you guys can relate. So it feels good to know that we're kind of all in this together. And I'm sure we're also all in very different stages of our life, which is also a really cool way to navigate this conversation and to have this conversation. But anyway, this guy on TikTok was saying like, I'm 34. This 34 is not the same 34 that my parents were. And I could not agree more. I'm 26. My mom was engaged at 26. She might have even gotten married at 26. Maybe it was 27, but nonetheless, she was married or engaged at 26. I have so many friends that are like, I had two kids at 26. I was married at 26. I was this at 26. But we're also talking about at least a 10-year age gap and the generational difference between today and 10 years in the future is so big because... 10 years ago, the world was so different. I was at the gym today on a treadmill, just walking and HGTV was on. Now, I don't know when this episode was filmed, but there was like a house flipping episode of, you know, something on HGTV. And it was these people looking at a house and the house was being sold. It was a three bedroom, two bath, two and a half bathroom house for $34,000. Thirty-four thousand dollars. Okay, literally right before I hit record, I was looking at houses because that's a goal of mine is to be in a house by Christmas. I want to purchase a home and move in it by Christmas. That's like my goal is to host Christmas in my own house this year. That's a big goal of mine. So I've been looking, 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 and I see this on TV: a thirty-four thousand dollar house. Thirty-four. And look, I don't know if it's just where I live because I know that like you can get lesser expensive houses. Like you go to Texas, you can buy a mansion for $500,000 where I live, which mind you, I just live in the suburbs. Like it's not even a crazy wealthy suburb where I live. I live in definitely a nicer area and I'm very fortunate for that. I've, you know, I'm very grateful, but there are some suburbs around me. Like it's, it's, it's called the main line. If you want to talk about wealthy suburbs, like that's the wealthy suburbs. I don't live on the main line. I live near the main line, but I don't live on the main line. And those are suburbs that the house is there. You can't get one for under $1.2 million. Okay. Like those are like wealthy suburbs. Now where I live, it's nice, but you also can't get like a good house for under four fifty, which is so crazy. So to see, and like, when I say a good house, I mean a house that's like, yeah, we'll need to put work in it. <laughs> like minimum, like, yeah, we'll need to put some work in it. But like, at least I can afford the payment. You know what I mean? At least I can afford the payment. Um, okay. Anyway, with that being said, um, and it was so funny because when I met up with um, 
Brooke and Danielle a few weeks ago at their live show. I was just telling them like we we're just updating one another about like living situations and stuff like that. And I told them that I moved out of where I was living and I'm back in my parents while I look for a house, da da da, whatever. And they were asking like what my rent was, rent was, and they were like, oh my god, Tori. I'm like, no, listen, I get it because I'm in the suburbs. So when I tell you what, that my rent was X amount, and to you guys who live in Manhattan, it's like you're throwing pennies. But you have to remember, like I live in the suburbs, like it should not be what it is right now. And especially renting, because you think about purchasing a home, like that was always the dream. Everyone always wanted to purchase, 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 purchase older generations, I should say. And that's something that I'm going to circle back to in a minute. Always wanted to purchase, purchase, purchase. And if you weren't able to purchase, then you always had the option to rent and renting was affordable and renting was something that you could do and renting like never really exceeded the cost of a mortgage. And that's why renting was a smart option for a lot of people. But now it's like the cost of a rental is either the cost of or more than the cost of a mortgage and you don't even have equity in it. So like right now, when I'm looking at apples to apples, it's like, okay, do I want to buy something and deplete my savings and have the cost of, you know, what it would cost to rent an apartment? Or do I want to rent an apartment and keep my savings, but just walk away with nothing at the end of it? Like those are the options. Like it's an even playing field and it's hard to throw a high rent payment out the window knowing that I don't have any equity in it, which is why I'm saving up on my parents until I buy something. Anyway, with all of that being said, on HGTV, it was $34,000. And then they were like, we're going to renovate the whole house, going to gut the whole house. The renovation budget was thirty five grand, And I also know this is a TV show, so it's not really that real. But thirty five grand for renovations, which I'm like, who are your contractors? Because I can't find a contractor. I got quoted the other day at the shore to do electrical work for very minor electrical work, mind you, just to literally run a few like wires for my um, heaters, $7,000, $7,000. I was like, "Hmm, okay. Anyway, moving on from that. So the renovations is going to be like 35 grand. And then they were like, yeah, we could probably list it for like $100,000. And I was like, $100,000 home for three bedroom, two and a half baths. (laughs) I'll move. I'll buy it. Sign me up. Like, sign me up. So all this is to say is that you can't compare apples to apples because we're not comparing apples to apples here. When people say, oh, yeah, like when I was 26, I blah, 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 had two kids, was married, had a house. Okay, the world is completely different now than it was when you were 26, when you were 27, when you were 28. Like when my mom was engaged at 26, they were buying their first home for $60,000. $60,000. Like if I had a house for 60, if I had the opportunity to buy a house today for $60,000, you think I'd be with my parents? No freaking way. So the world is different. So if you just can't compare what, the societal norms are because society is not normal right now. This is not normal, right? So I think just kind of minimizing that pressure off of myself has been helping a lot. And I was talking to my friend Katie about this because we as Gen Z, and I'm like on the older end of Gen Z. I think Gen Z started in 96, 97. I was born in 98. So I'm like on the older end of Gen Gen Z. Gen Z is the generation that is like rebuilding a new set of societal norms. And I think COVID expedited that like astronomically just because like, you know how people say when something traumatic happens in your life, you kind of stop aging and like that's the age that you stay forever. I was talking to my boyfriend about this because his parents had like a, a pretty radical divorce and he ended up like moving away from his hometown at 14. And I always joke with him that like he stopped aging at 14 because like it was a pretty crazy divorce that his parents had. And at 14, like that's when it all happened. And he's still very much so 14 um, at times. And we like joke about it, whatever. That's like kind of how I feel with COVID. Like when I was 21, that's when COVID hit. And I still really feel like I've been kind of stuck in 21 
And I know a lot of you guys feel that way too. It's like a very common topic. I'm not reinventing the wheel here, but I feel like COVID really expedited that whole like Gen Z is rebuilding a generation. I feel like, or I should say societal norms. I feel like the millennials are the ones that are breaking it. And Gen Z is the one that is rebuilding it. And then Gen Alpha, which I guess is coming after Gen Z. Also, who determines these names? Because Gen Alpha, can we rebrand that? Thank you. Um, th- I don't even know what their what their deal is. I'm already afraid of them. And they're like seven-year-olds with iPads. I'm like afraid of them. They're going to be like half robot by the time they're 30. But anyway, um, it's it's just you can't compare like this 26 is never going to be our parents 26 and to tie it all back full circle that guy on tiktok that's like my 34 is not my parents 34 he's so right because the world is just so different and a lot of it does have to do with technology and the digital age and just how fast we have, as humans have progressed there is an episode of american horror story or i guess it was a uh, one of the seasons where I think it was season, oh God, six. The, the Whichever the season was that had a double feature where the first half of the season was about these writers and they were in Cape Cod and they were taking these drugs to make them like access their brain and write a lot more. There was that, but then the second half of the season was about aliens and like this alien invasion and Kaya Ger, is it Kaya Gerber or Kira? I think Kaya. She's dating Austin Butler. I think it's Kaya. Anyway, she's in that season and she is like hooking up with her college professor and her college professor was saying, if you put someone from 1970 in today's world, like they would literally have a heart attack because the the age of technological growth and the digital era and the digital growth is just so astronomical that it's not normal and it's just made all of us progress so much as humans and almost like too much for us to be able to even comprehend which I completely agree with it feels so true and also really validating to hear that it just feels nice like I don't want to fall in this system of I'm a victim and like this is victimhood and like poor me, I'm never going to be able to afford a house and poor me, like the world's different. I don't want that narrative and that mentality to come across in this, in this episode because that's really not at all what I'm trying to portray here. But what I am trying to portray is that like we're just evolving so quickly that it's really hard to keep up. And, you know, generation X to the boomers, yeah, they could kind of compare things or the silent generation to generation X. Like I, that's my mom's generation to my grandma's generation like they could kind of be comparable on some things, but it's almost impossible to compare my generation to my mom's generation because there was a whole digital booming that happened in between those two generations. And that's where like the millennial comes into play. And that has been the whole just crazy, crazy growth that we've seen that just makes the world completely a, a different, a different place than it was. Anyway, what I'm getting at. The two can't be compared. And yes, he's absolutely right. Our 34 is not the same as our parents 34. My 26 is not the same as your 26, even if you are only 10, 8, 6, not 6, maybe 8 to 10, 12, 15 years older than me. It's just a completely different world. And that always is kind of stuck with me because now I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm 26. Last year I was 25 and I've never felt my age. Like what about, what about me? Is it that I don't feel 26 and when will I ever feel 26? Just last night, my mom was taking down the flowers and she was like, Oh, Tori, like your flowers are, you know, they're dead. Like they're ready to go. Do you want me to throw them away? But then she goes, Oh, but this one flower. And then she named it. It's still alive. Like we can keep these. And I'm like, So when does that happen? When do I learn the names of flowers? Like, is that something that I should just know with age? Or do you like, you become a mom and then you know flower names? Like, when does that begin? So, and my dad got a kick out of that, but I'm like, no, like I'm actually being serious. Like, when does that begin? So I've always just been like, when do I begin to feel my age? And I was listening to a podcast the other day and it it was, um, she was talking about 
a lot of the idea of self-image, which is something that we have talked a lot about on this podcast as well. I have an episode called Showing Up as Her, which I'll link it down below. I actually just recently reran it because it's one of my favorite episodes that I've put out. And whenever I can link it, I do because I find it very applicable to a lot of what we talk about on the show. But anyway, he was saying um, or she was saying on this podcast how self-image is really the key to being whoever you want in your life, showing up as whoever you want to in your life. And I really began to to think about that and to adapt that. And I thought back, okay, I'm 26 years old. When I was little, like when I was four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, even in middle school, what did I used to think of a 26 year old as? Because I, I like love the image of what I thought I would be in my 20s when I was really young. When I thought of 25, I thought I would be so girly, like the ultimate girly girl. I thought I would have a boyfriend. I thought I would have my career. I just thought like the epitome, like I would, I thought I would be like Barbie. You know what I mean? Like that's honestly what I thought, like super girly, super in love, super content. And I even for a while just had no idea that there was like a life after college. Like I always thought it was like you grow up, you go to high school, you go to college, you meet your husband in college, you get married, you have a house, you have kids and you start a family and like that's your life. But I always remember thinking, you know, 24, 25, 26, I'm just going to be so girly. And so the past few days I've just been thinking about who I thought I would be when I was young and like a little girl. And I just, I loved the idea of it. I thought I would be wearing pink every day. I thought I'd be wearing high heels every day. I thought I'd be doing my hair and makeup every day. I just thought all these really fun things. And I don't know why that got destroyed or why that ever changed or why I don't live like that because it still brings me a lot of joy to think of that's what 26 is. And even when I think about that now in my life, I'm like, yeah, like that makes sense. Like that's the kind of woman and the kind of girl that I want to be at 26. Like when I think about what a 26 year old does every day and what she looks like and who she shows up as, it's not who I was embodying a week ago. So this really shifted my narrative of we also always hear the dialogue of the inner child, right? And for me, I'm I'm so blessed because I don't feel like I had any sort of traumatic childhood. I had a really fantastic childhood. I had the most amazing parents. I had the most amazing friends. I had the most amazing neighborhood. I had a great school that I went to. Like I really grew up so fortunate and so blessed and so grateful And I also, side note, feel like a really big responsibility that if I do choose to have kids one day, that I don't want kids until I can give them that life that I had because it was a perfect childhood. And whenever I hear this conversation of healing your inner child, I don't have her to heal because like she's good. You know what I mean? Like she's happy. She's content. So that's never really resonated with me. But when I think back to, okay, what did my, what does my inner child think a 26 year old looks like and acts like and does every day? It's not what I was doing. I, I thought that she would be strong, independent, um, in love, all these things. And I have a lot of that. Like I am in love. I have a career. I didn't think I'd be living with my parents, but again, we're working on that. Um, I realized that I'm just not like living up to this version of myself that the little girl in me thought that a 26 year old was. And then on the side note of that, I think a lot about my career. And I mentioned in last week's episode that I'm really happy in my career and I'm really happy with all the avenues that I've explored and all the paths I've been taken down. I find that I will open up a door and really explore it and really go down it and really dedicate myself to it. 
And then I decide like, do I like it or do I not? And if I do, I go further. And if I don't, I pivot. And I've never been afraid to change my career. I've never been afraid to pivot my career. I've never been afraid to change. I've never been afraid to like test the the bounds of something. And, you know, even if it's not traditional, I don't care. Like I, I've always just been happy being an entrepreneur and I always want to be that way. I, I always want to work for myself. I, I see so much value in, you know, working for other people and a corporate world. But for me personally, I just right now could, couldn't ever see that for myself. So I also think in terms of like my professional life and my career, what else is it that I want to do? And something that I've been talking about extensively is that I really want to bring my podcasting up to the next level. And I really want to be a full-time podcaster. Um, I have a few shows that I want to begin. I have a few like really fun ideas that I I just want to start. And I've been thinking to myself like, okay, so I'm going to do two things moving forward. Number one, I'm going to begin to show up as that 26 year old version that I thought I would be as a little girl. And number two, I'm going to show up as the profession that I want in my life, which is to be a full time podcaster. And I'm going to act as if I have a show that's top of the charts and that I'm, you know, I spend my days recording other podcast shows that I want to begin and really just kind of moving my life in that direction and really fully embodying and integrating this self image and perception of myself. And since I've started prioritizing my life with those two components in mind who I thought a 26 year old would look like and what the life of a full-time podcaster looks like I've really brought a lot of direction and a lot of prioritization into my life and that's been really cool what's also interesting is that I have these now two new perceptions of myself that I'm bringing forward every day, but I also have the normal routine things of my life that still need to get done in order to pay the bills, keep things running. Like I'm not a delusional person where I can just like throw things out the window and pretend like I have no responsibilities or no financial obligations or not like I have four brick and mortar businesses that need me. Um, but I'm able to show up as these two perceptions while still managing everything else and making it all work. And I think that's been really important too. Um, Like for example, when it comes to stride, like never leaving that, like that's my baby. Like that's my, my passion. Like I love stride and I love my Jersey shore businesses and I love being at the beach and I love the studio back at home in Phoenixville. Like I love that and that's never going anywhere. Um, but there's also a way to build upon a life that I already have into a new version of myself. And that's kind of how this has been navigating and and playing out. And that's been really cool to see. So showing up as this version of myself that I, I would assume was, I would have been like at, you know, when I was five thinking about a 26 year old showing up as that five year old thought process has been really fun and really, dare I say healing, even though I just said there's nothing to heal. I can't really think of another word for it, but like satisfying, it's almost like scratching an itch and it just feels really authentic and really good. And it's been really nice, like doing my makeup. Like, why did that stop? I used to love makeup. Clearly, I literally started on YouTube putting out makeup tutorials. And I stopped wearing makeup entirely. As soon as COVID hit, I was like, yeah, like I'm not leaving the house. I don't need to wear makeup. So I stopped putting on makeup for myself. Why? I loved putting on makeup. I stopped getting dressed up for myself why? Like I felt good when I would get dressed up. Like in high school, I remember I would get dressed every single day and I would come home and I would literally stay in my jeans and it felt good. You know, I felt like I just wanted to do more with my day and I wanted to do more with 
myself and I, I just felt more motivated. Like I would come home from school and I would film YouTube videos or I even remember in college, they pretty much told us like, don't wear jeans. Like that's weird. When you go to class, like you wear an oversized t-shirt and shorts. And I remember I wanted to wear jeans and the few times that I did, it was very like weird. And that was like a crazy thing to now think about of like, man, I wanted to wear jeans. So re-showing back, showing back up again as that version of myself where I'm put together, I put the time and energy into myself, into my self-image. Not only is it self-love, but it also motivates me to do more with my day and to be a better version of myself overall. And it also just heals and feels good to that like little five-year-old version of me that you know, believed being a girl was when you're grown up was wearing high heels and wearing pink and putting on makeup. Like I couldn't wait for that. And now I'm that age and I'm not honoring that. And that's sad. So I'm choosing to honor it and I'm loving it. It's being really fun. And I've decided that 26 is a mindset and you begin to feel 26 when you choose to embody it. And it doesn't have to have a societal definition you can define it however you want to. And that's really limitless. And that feels really freeing. And whatever profession it is that you want in your life, showing up as that person every day, you know, if you want to, we can say in my image, if I want to have multiple podcast shows and be a full-time podcaster, um, that means podcasting first thing in the morning and then doing my my stride stuff after this. Cause I, yeah, I have a lot of like front desk scheduling to do and just like random admin stuff to do that. I won't bore you guys with on this podcast. And normally I would do it first thing in the morning, but now I'm, I'm going to do it later in the afternoon. And guess what? It's all still going to get done, but I'm just kind of reframing my priorities and, that's a cool thing to step into because I feel like I'm building this future for myself that I want and this perception of myself that, you know, if I want to be a full-time podcaster, I need to embody it. They always say, dress the part until you have the part. I don't know if that's actually what they say or what the actual line is, but it's something like that. And it's, it's just really cool to step into that. And it feels, it feels really nice. So yeah, I'm choosing my self image and I'm allowing my perception of myself to guide my daily decisions and my daily actions and to show up as that version of myself, which in itself is manifestation. And that's everything that we talk about on this podcast. And it's not just the thoughts, but it's the actions, right? It's the showing up as that. Now I could say all day like, oh yeah, I'm a full-time podcaster. But then if I don't sit down and record this podcast and then put it out, it's like, are you delusional? Like you're just saying that? Like that'd literally be me sitting here and be like, yeah, I'm a lawyer. Don't want to go to law school. Never plan on going to law school. Like you have to put actions to your thoughts. And this perception of, you know, what does a 26 year old look like to me? And then how can I now embody it? Only I can decide what that looks like, what my aging process looks like, how I grow up, how I develop, how my milestones, like what that looks like, rebuilding what I think is a 26 year old. It doesn't matter what society says, because I'm also not living for society. And also society doesn't really care what I do. Like straight up, no one cares what I do other than me. So I need to just live for me and make myself happy. And it's been, it's been cool to really show up as that. Like, I feel like since I put out my episode last week, I've just been so like, I've really been thinking about it. Like, what does it look like for me in 2024 to show up as a 26 year old? And I feel like I figured it out and I feel really good about it. And it just comes back to self image and me deciding that this is what it's going to be. This is what I'm going to do. And this is how I feel good doing it. And I encourage you guys, if you are feeling lost in life, whether it's in a career a relationship, a living situation in general about anything, how do you want to perceive yourself today? And it helped me 
to ask myself, how did the little girl that I once was perceive my age or perceive my life and kind of catering it to that? Because when I was a kid anyway, I was so innocent and as most all kids are so innocent, so pure and just so full of life. And I still think I am like, I still have a big zest for life. I, I love life. I love living. I am so grateful for this life. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be alive. I can't even believe the stars aligned and I'm here. Like it's truly a miracle that we're all here. Um, and I don't take it for granted and I don't take for granted the family that I was born into and the friends that I've developed and the relationship that I have and the love that I'm surrounded by. None of that gets taken for granted. But just kind of thinking, like asking myself, who did that little girl envision I would be and then kind of living by that has just felt so natural and authentic and right. And it's cool. Like kids are so pure you know what I mean and just to kind of live that purely and not be tainted by the image of society or you have to make a certain amount of money or you have to do these certain things it's cool and my boyfriend all the time says these like crazy things that I giggle at because I'm like you're you're like a seven-year-old boy sometimes like what you say and Sometimes I judge it. (laughs) Sometimes I laugh. Sometimes I love it. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God. But whenever I find myself judging it, I'm like, well, why? Like, why do we have to change? Why do we have to grow up and just accept that like as we get older, you're supposed to just be like miserable? Why? I don't want that. I always want to be zesty in life and full of life and happy in life just because you're older doesn't mean you have to get more boring like your life can always be incredible throughout every stage of your life and my dad's in his 60s and he's like every year just keeps getting better gets better and better and better and everyone that turns 30 they say your 30s are your best and your 40s are even better and then every year just gets better and you know that's also helped with growing older and just stop putting so much pressure on myself of like, this is where I'm supposed to be because all those norms are thrown out the window. The world is so different. Society, I hate that I keep saying that, but I don't know what else to say, is so different that like there, there's no timeline. There's no fast track. There's no right way of things. There's no wrong way of things. And it's also like, this is everyone's first time living. Like I think of my mom and she's in her fifties and it's her first time being in her fifties, you know? She's never had a grown daughter before. She's never had two adult kids. It's her first time having adult kids. It's her first time being in her mid-50s. It's her first time navigating this all at once. It's my dad's first time navigating all of this. And I was talking to a friend about their parents' divorce and how her dad like had you know, he really struggled with the divorce that he was going through because he had this idea of how he wanted to be a dad and then he wasn't able to be that dad anymore because of this divorce. And it's like, that's devastating. Like, I I never thought about that either from a parent's perspective of, you know, you have this idea of you're going to be this kind of parent and then you get divorced and then that opportunity gets stripped away from you. And it's like, your one and only opportunity to do that in your whole life and it's over like it I've just never really taken that perspective into account before so that's been crazy to think about so just giving the grace of this is all our first time going through this life and there's no right way to go about this there's no wrong way to go about this and just to let us be human and to fully live and to experience life in the way it is it's such a beautiful thing so that's kind of just been what I've been thinking. That's my revelation on self-image and self-perception and showing up as who I want to be and how I how I got to that by tapping into my my inner child. So I think that's where I'm going to end today. I kind of just wanted to like throw that out there. I wasn't even going to talk about this today, but when I was voice messaging my friend Chelsea, it was literally about this. And I was like, I, I think I'm going to talk about this today. So I'm glad I did. Um, it felt good and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, happy manifest Monday guys. I love you. If you guys wouldn't mind, would you please share the show on your story or text it to a friend 
and also rate the show five stars wherever you're listening, whether it be on Spotify or Apple. It helps the show so much, and I'm always so appreciative of it. Thank you guys so much for listening. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you all in the next podcast. Bye, guys.